Nam Dal Show. This is episode 1047 and we are here live in Southwest Florida in my garden studio. If you are joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you have questions for me. Let me know if you're crafting. Whatever. Tell me whatever you want. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. Hopefully you're having a great day so far. It is extremely humid here today. Extremely. I don't know what the humidity percentage is, but it's not that hot and it feels extremely humid already. Uh, thank goodness for my fan. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Good morning. <sighs> Hi, Lily. Hi, Judy. Good morning. Hi, Rena. Good morning. Hi, Donna. Whew. Donna and Donna, two Donnas in a row. Hi, Sanchel. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Judy and Lily and Kathy, Thea. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Laura and Karen. Good morning. Happy Friday. And welcome back to the Krista Namdahl Show. This is episode 1047. And we are live in Southwest Florida in my garden studio. Hi, Nancy and Grace, Angela, Lisa. Thanks, Rena. I'm actually wearing a dress. And this may be the last time I can wear it, which means we probably need to do redo a sample with the demi sleeves. I do have a link for it. Judy will not be joining us this morning. She had somewhere else to go today. So I will be trying to update the live links as we go. I have most things that I wanted to talk about already uh, open in tabs. There is the link for the pattern for these sleeves. So I turned the dress around this morning because the dress that I attached the crochet sleeves to is reversible. And I noticed that I've recently washed it and there was a spot on the other side of the dress that I was hoping would come out in the wash and it did not. I couldn't tell if it was a sweat stain or an oil stain when I took it off. And turns out it is an oil stain and I was not able to get it out in the wash. So I flipped it around. That's the beauty of getting dressed for camera versus getting dressed for real life. You only have to look okay on one side. <laughs> so I wanted to wear it for one last time before I don't wear it anymore. I might even cut the sleeves out. I did sew these to the dress. That's actually not a terrible idea. I, did I sew them? No, I crocheted them onto the dress. Anyway, might be able to salvage it, might not be able to, but either way, uh, they are so quick to make that I could just make another pair to match a different tank top or match another, another dress and do the demo for you sooner than later because I love wearing sleeves. Uh, also, because there've been so many questions about how to lengthen these sleeves, it might be a good opportunity for me to do another video showing them this way and then showing them in a longer version as well. So see? You can always look at the positive side of things. Even though I have to say goodbye to this dress, it's still an opportunity to uh, do more things with the design. So, there you go. Anyway, uh, let's see, who did I miss? Tangled Kitties, good morning. What a cute name. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me, questions about this? If you go to the pattern page, the video should be embedded into it. Otherwise, you can find it as a standalone video here on my YouTube channel as well. It is called the Demi Crochet Sleeve, D-E-M-I, Demi Crochet Sleeve Pattern. Super easy to make and a great way to cover up your arms if you don't like to wear sleeveless tops, sleeveless dresses, and we all know that that's how they sell a lot of them in the stores for summer. So it's a great way to cover up something that you um, may not be comfortable showing. Hi, Donna. Hi, Stacy. Good morning. Hi, Debbie. Uh, okay, so I have so much to share with you today, starting with if you did not get a chance to watch yesterday's video, I took a very deep dive. Let me get a link to it just in case anyone wants it. Uh, I took a very deep dive yesterday into a crochet motif design uh, that I no longer have, but it it's a, for a crochet bag 
called the Madison Crochet Bag that I first released in Motif Magic. You can also find the pattern as a standalone pattern on my website. Comes with the charts, the written instructions, all that good stuff. So uh, you can get it in the book, you can get it singular as well. But then I did a video for it yesterday and in the video I showed you how to make the motif that you use for the Madison Crochet Bag. It's a square motif, this little one right here. And in the video, I show you how to make the motif, how to join it on one side, also how to join it on two sides. And if you are confused about how to join motifs together, I really took my time to set my work down flat in between every single join so you could try to get the visual of where you're going when you're joining two motifs together. It is a concept that is often very confusing for a lot of beginners, and I hope that yesterday's video really broke it down very slowly, step by step. And it's only a three round motif, so it's something that you can make up quickly and create a fabric from quickly. Also, when you're making motifs, it can be any size yarn, any size crochet hook. You can make the motifs in lace weight, number one fingering weight, number two sport weight, number three DK weight, which is what this is, number four worsted weight, number five bulky, number six chunky. It doesn't matter. The larger the yarn, the larger the hook, the larger the motifs. Make this in a thick yarn and make a gorgeous afghan. Make it in a medium weight yarn and make it a rectangular wrap. Make it in a fingering weight yarn and make something dressier. Doesn't matter. You can make these motifs and join them as you go to create any two-dimensional fat flat fabric. Now, you could make you can join you can use the fabric in the square formation like this. You can also turn it on its side and do the diamond formation like this, which is how the bag is done. There's another thing that you can do once you turn things on the diamond like that, and that is to create a half motif version. See how there are triangles on the top here? That's so that we can still have a straight edge even if we're doing the motifs on a diamond formation. Let's say you wanted this to be a rectangular wrap, but also on the diamond. You'd have to do those half motifs along the whole sides. If you watch yesterday's video, not only do I show you how to make the motif, how to join it one-sided, how to join it two-sided, I show you three schematics for how to line them up in diamond formation, to make a rectangular wrap in diamond formation, to make a triangle wrap, in diamond formation with the triangles along the top, and even where to place the triangle motifs if you wanted to make a traditional rectangular poncho but still have a neck opening with neck shaping as well. So once you know how to make motifs and join them together, you can make any fabric with motifs, so it's really exciting. And so in the video, I show you not only how to make the square motif, but also how to make the triangular motif. This is worked in rounds, this one's worked in rows, and then how to join this one together, one-sided and two-sided, how to join this one together, one-sided and two-sided join, and then the schematic with the three different types of projects that you could make with the diamond formation, in addition to the fact that there's an existing pattern with schematic to make this into a bag in diamond formation as well. So tons and tons of information. I took a really deep dive into this motif and I hope you enjoy it. If you've been curious about motifs, been intimidated to try them, I highly recommend this because number one, oh, my allergies are terrible lately. I've got such a tickle in my nose, sorry. Uh, three round motif, quick to make. No matter what size yarn to make you use, it's still a quick motif to make. Simple stitches and just absolutely gorgeous. You could make cowls, scarves, wraps, shawls, afghans, tops, ponchos, whatever, anything that you want to make with it. So I did want to point all that out because if you didn't get a chance to watch it yet, it is here. I've already shared a link to it and I highly recommend it. All right. Does anybody have any questions about that or anything else? Hi, Coco Rivera. Hi, Carrie. Good morning. And hello to anybody's names that I missed. Hi, Val. Good morning.
I have a bunch more to share with you today too, but I have something exciting to show you as well. Look what I have. I have the first physical copy of Crochet Power Book. Uh, this one was shipped ahead of the rest of the pre-orders, which will be here hopefully soon. I will let you know as soon as they're here. If you are interested in ordering the pre-order paperback, personalized, and autographed copy of Crochet Power directly from me, you will receive a gift with purchase. I will be offering the ebook for free with the purchase of the book while it's in the pre-order stage. It's a $12.99 value. You can find that on my website. Let's see, I opened the link. There it is. I tried really hard to get Bjorn to come out with he here with me this morning to say hi to everybody. And he said, it's too bright and humid out there. I want to go out at nighttime. So we tried. He stayed out here for five minutes and he went back inside. We'll try again another day. Um, okay so let's see so i just shared a link to where you can pre-order this once it is no longer in pre-order state anymore once it's shipping the ebook and the paperback book will be sold individually it will be available on amazon all over the world for print on them for to get a print copy not autographed by me and it will be available as an ebook on there as well so if you prefer shopping on amazon rather than shopping directly for me you will be able to do that as well but during the pre-order stage you can get uh the ebook for free with the purchase of the pre-order on my website does anybody have any questions about that i've shared a link to it up here And we can look at it a little bit. Oh, it's so much good stuff in here. So printed in large font like I always do. Hi, Louis. Good morning, which is so exciting. Uh, so much information in here. So much information in the front content about how to substitute yarns, how to do, how to double, what, what, what it means when you double yarns, how to use the book, why you would want to use even in rows, even in rounds, e increase in rows, increase in rounds. Then hundreds of project dimensions for working even in rows, how to make different size blankets from a security blanket, stroller, receiving, toddler, lapgan, throw, twin, full, queen, king, and California king. All of those dimensions are here for Afghans. If you want to look at kitchen things for working in rows, the dimensions for a tea towel, hand towel, rug, floor runner, table runner, all that kind of stuff. Then within scarves, the width and length for skinny scarf, for winter scarf, for different ages from preteen, small woman, medium, large, small man, medium, and large man. Then in a stalls and wraps, the rectangular version, what are some dimensions for small, medium, and large? Then working even in rounds, different sizes for cowls, different sizes for hats. There's an entire chart on hat sizes in here. Then working increase in rows for the top down increasing triangle. Different sizes for shawls from kerchief, shawlette, and full size shawl. Then working increase in rounds, everything from making individual squares to different sizes for rugs and large square shawls. You could also refer to the Afghan section, working even in rows then. So when you look at all of these, we have hundreds of dimensions here for different types of projects. Times four motif, four, times 19 motifs, times four different construction styles per motifs. So it is just incredible all the different ways that you can make anything you want without a pattern. So you could take any of these stitch patterns, use any four of the construction styles from even in rows to even in rounds to increase in rows to increase in rounds with any weight yarn, mind you, and then refer back to the dimensions of all those projects in the beginning of the book, and then get an idea of how big things should be for whatever you're trying to make. It's just an amazing resource, and there are unlimited project possibilities, all without a pattern. So very excited about all that. I think you're going to absolutely love it. I will be teaching classes on each of the stitch patterns in here as well. So for example, let's pull one of them. Let's see, um, are we just, Here's an example. Let's go to the Simone. So if you love the Simone stitch pattern 
and I'm go, uh, let's say that I offer a class on the Simone stitch pattern. You'll be able to take a class, get the download for that stitch pattern included in the class, and then we'll go over how to make each full, all four of the different construction styles in that stitch pattern, and how to make different things, and why you would want to make different things, and what weight yarns would be appropriate for different types of projects, and all sorts of other things. So I, there, the book's available now in pre-order. The ebook will be available soon it's free with purchase with the physical book now they will be shipping on the day they will be sent the day the book begins shipping um, and there will be classes available on it as well i am working on an intro to knitting class that uh, i should be releasing sooner rather than later i'll get it out as soon as i can um, uh, Angela, I just work all the time. That's all. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, though? It's such an amazing resource. It's This book concept has been a dream of mine for many, 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 many years. I've been talking about it forever, and to finally see it physically is such a dream come true. I'm so excited to empower crocheters with a resource like this. It's amazing, and I can't wait for you to try it. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, and again, if you want to order it during pre-order right now, you will get the ebook for free, which is a $12.99 value. So that's really awesome too. Let's see. That's great, Kaylin. That's great. All right. So I wanted to recap a few of the other things that uh, you might have missed this week and show you a sneak peek for something that's coming next week. So if you didn't get a chance, you could uh, watch the video for this pattern. This is the Key West Crochet Shawl. It's a top-down increasing shawl, and earlier this week, would you rather see the video link or the pattern link? If, you go, if I give you the pattern link, the videos will be on that pattern page as well, so it's kind of like you get everything if I send you this one. It's two, there were two videos that I made this week. And what's interesting about this is that the original shawl was done in number one fingering weight yarn, but it's a top down construction. Top down construction, any patterns can be made in any weight yarn. You just change, the videos are linked in the pattern page that I just sent. Uh, you can make it in any weight yarn and just end when it's the appropriate length for you. So if you're making this in thicker yarn, you'll need less rows. If you're making it in thinner yarn, you'll need more rows. And the pattern and the videos explain to you where to end on any given row repeat so that you're perfectly placed to do the edging. And the edging really, really blends well with the stitch pattern. I love the way they combine together. So I intentionally made the sample in the video and a thicker yarn than the original project because I wanted to show you that you totally can make things in different weights of yarn. Does anybody have any questions about that before I go on? Someone wants the direct link to the video. Okay, here is part one. And here is part two. Both of these videos have timestamps, so if you want to come back to any given row, you can. So in the video description, I put timestamps in there which are hyperlinked in the video, which is really cool. So let's say that you're working along and you're like, oh, I'm on a repeat of row five and I can't remember how to do this stitch. You can see row five is hyperlinked here and click on it and it'll take you right to that spot in the video. If you haven't used timestamps before, they're very convenient and fun. If you have questions about that let me know all right then the other thing that came out this week is the bubbly knit lace shawl and i it is a new pattern it is also available as a video tutorial now as well and in the video tutorial not only do i show you how to do all of the amazing stitches that are included in this pattern uh, but they are but it i also show you how to read the chart too are uh, my videos on my website uh, barbara my videos are hosted on youtube i embed them into the pattern pages for convenience so if you're on the pattern page Generally speaking, I'm not totally caught up on everything, but generally speaking, if there's a video for that pattern, it will be embedded on that page where you can watch it on my website. But if you want to watch the video, uh, if you want to see the video description and leave a comment, you'll have to click to go back over to YouTube. Does that make sense? 
Also on my website, there is a link on the homepage to videos where it'll show you all of my YouTube videos in order of most recent, but there is no search engine on that page. It's just, a, it's an embedding of my YouTube channel. So yes, there are lots of ways to watch videos on my website, but if you truly want search functionality and to be able to search by playlist and everything else, you have more search options for videos specifically if you just go to my YouTube channel, but you can watch all of my, most of my videos on my website as well. I hope that made sense. So did I share the link? I shared the link. I should share the link to this too. I did open it up. Let's see. And on the in the video descriptions on YouTube, from there you can also um, go to the video description and I always have where the pattern is on my website linked in the video description as well. So most of the time you can get to the website and the pattern from the video and you can get to the video from the website and the pattern. Let me, see. I just wanna make sure that that makes sense. So there's the pattern for this. And here is the video. But if you go to either one, you can get to the other one from there as well. In this video, I show you how to do the shawl, how to read the chart, and how to do the edging all at the same time. Next, I wanted to talk to you about something that's coming up that I haven't uh, shared yet. I'm redoing the videos for the Sporty Luna Shrug which is an awesome pattern on my website. And in the original pattern on my website, where is it, there it is. In the original pattern on my website, I used number two sport weight yarn. And I thought it was going to be really interesting to show you a couple of things with this. I'm remaking it by doubling two strands of number three DK weight yarn to give myself a little more of a worsted weight to an Aran weight of yarn, which is a, just like, number four worsted weight, and maybe a tiny bit thicker, somewhere in that range. And I'm redoing the Sporty Luna Shrug in the thicker yarn because I, and I'm not changing the stitch counts. I'm not changing anything about it. I'm just making the strips bigger to make a bigger shrug. If you see the pattern, uh, the photos in the pattern, the shrug was small. It was meant to just cover a little bit of arm and just meant to cover in the back. But by making the strips longer, so just to give you an idea of the stitch construction here, it strips and we're joining them kind of in the concept of Bruges lace. So it is a strip with this beautiful flower in it with chain five spaces at the end of every row. And then when you join a second strip, you have the opportunity to change from a chain five to a chain five join, which is chain two, slip stitch, chain two. And then you're joining them as you go. What's amazing about this kind of construction is, yes, is the pattern for a shrug? You betcha. But what else could you do with this? Anything you want to be two-dimensional, first of all. So any afghan, any scarf, any rectangular wrap, you could make these strips as long as you want and you could join as many of them together as you want. I'm trying to show it in front of the fence so you can see the, the pattern detail. So gorgeous, right? And so I only have two strips joined so far, but I'm gonna give you an idea of what it'll look like as a shrug. I'm gonna do at least one more, maybe two. Almost enough to join. But I think with a third, with a third motif, I'll have the, the width that I want to be able to join them for sleeves and to have this coming up and maybe coming up a little more on my shoulders too, like that. Okay, but isn't that going to be gorgeous? I can't wait. And I'm not going to join them underneath. No, this is called the Sporty Luna Shrug. It's a completely different construction style than the Jillian. And so you can make the motifs, or make the strips as wide as you want to cover as much shoulders as you want, to cover as much arms as you want. And then you can join as many strips together as you want to make it as long as you want. That's great for making different sizes for the shrug, but it's great for making scarves, shawls, afghans, even the front and back of a top, the front and back of a uh, poncho. Doesn't You could make it a cowl. Well, that's one of the reasons why I don't want to permanently join the sleeve seams. I'm going to join them corset tie with chains because you know what else this would be great for? making a cowl that you could join together as well, or wearing it as a scarf 
just down. Like I think there's a there are good reasons to leave it down and not always wear it as the shrug. I think that's super cute too. You could also make it a Mobius turning one time. So we'll talk about all that in the videos and we'll talk about it again when the videos are uh, are released. The pattern's available now, so the concept is there, how to make them, the strips, how to join the strips together. There is an old video on it as well, but I'm really wanting to redo all of that for giving you so much more information and to be able to use the pattern for way more than just the shrug. Okay, that's not all. <laughs> so I said I combined two strands of number three DK weight yarn for this pattern, even though the original called for number two sport weight. It was number two sport weight, I believe, a four millimeter or five millimeter hook. I ended up combining two strands of number three DK weight and using a K hook or 6.5 millimeter, but that's not even all. I ended up doing two different colors, but two colors that are complementary colors. So I used a light blue and a periwinkle. And the reason I used complementary colors is because I thought it would give a little bit of shadow and highlight depth to the stitches. So can you see those two colors pretty well? There's a periwinkle and a baby blue, sky blue. And then can you see that variation in the stitches now? Is that in focus? Isn't that pretty? Now, would it be pretty all in one color? Of course it would, but isn't it fun to explore color options as well? And so it's just something that's slightly different. It's more subtle than a variegated yarn. It is less subtle than a solid colored yarn, which just gives you more options. And again, talk about a stash buster. You wanna make something quick? Double and triple your yarn to make something go quicker, right? and also making bigger pieces with larger hooks makes the project faster as well but it's also a great way to eat up stash yarn if you're not if you don't have an like i have very little remnants left of be so baby yarn which is what this is number three dk weight is how i'm describing it though so that you can figure out whatever you want to use for stash busting as well i didn't have enough of either one of these colors to do this project on its own so I pulled out my bins yesterday and I looked at everything by color and I had two neutral colors that were similar and then I had some blues and turquoises that were similar. And I was really just looking for enough yarn so that if I doubled it, that I would have enough yardage to make something larger than the original shrug. And I had four balls each of several colors, but I really needed eight balls total to do this. Uh, maybe you do, Steffi. Yeah, I, I did not keep a lot of my yarns. I really needed to let go of them for money. Uh, so yes, I'm sure some of you do have more of my yarns than I do. And use it in good health, and I appreciate you buying it so much. Yeah, or three strand, bu strand buster. I, can you imagine how quickly this would go as an afghan if you use three strands and an eight millimeter hook? Like... <sighs> The more you add, the bigger you go, the quicker it is. And I don't know about you, but when I make afghans, not only do I want them to be quick, but I also want them to be super cozy. So combining three or four strands of yarn in a beautiful lace stitch pattern with join as you go strips would be amazing as an afghan. And here's another thing, you could still consider stripes. This is made in strips. So what if you made this strip one color? this strip one color that's another way to uh, combine colors when you're trying to uh, use up your stash and you're limited in the amount of balls you have of any given color just make each strip a different color too or alternate the strips color a color b color a color b color c whatever uh, you can do that in so many different ways too hi uh, thanks vimala i shared a link to the pattern attached to my um sleeves it's called the demi sleeves and i can share that link again okay does anybody have any other questions actually we're gonna wait i'm gonna wait because i know everybody's enjoying the uh 30 second uh reset that i've been doing lately so i want to make sure we have time to do that before the end so i'm gonna close my eyes and if you have if you trust me enough to close your eyes with me we're gonna Close your eyes, relax, and focus on the sounds around us for 30 seconds starting now.
Okay, I think I counted to 30. I'll put my glasses back on so I can see. Uh, did that feel refreshing to do? I know we didn't have a ton of birds this morning, but I think it was still kind of relaxing. I thought so, hopefully you did as well. And I will double check to make sure there weren't any questions while I was doing that. Let's see, did we miss any questions? I don't know what sleeve you're talking about from 52 Crochet Gift Sandshell. Sorry, I don't recall off the top of my head. I don't believe this pattern was in there though. Oh, which reminds me, there was, uh, there've been, there's been some chatter about uh, working any shawls small to do on the sleeves. This is a half circle that gives you a straight edge along the bottom. Doing a triangle version will not really work as well because you'd have that point in the center here. When choosing a motif or a half motif or a mini shawl to attach his sleeves, if you're looking to do this with a different pattern, you want to look for half circles. Maybe half hexagons, but definitely half circles are what works best for this flutter style sleeve. Does anybody have any questions about that? I can explain that further if you need. You're welcome, Karen. Okay, all of the links that I shared today will also be in the video description after the show, but in the meantime, uh, I did share them in the live links as well. And if anybody wants to stay for one more minute, we can uh, randomly choose a quote from one of our books. Ah, this is such a great one. This is, this is from Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 3. You can find these on my website and on Amazon throughout the world. This is by Heraclitus. Uh, Heraclitus, man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. I love this one. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, I think the more enthusiastic and exuberant you can feel about whatever you're doing, you bring more positive energy to the situation for sure. And it is just a reminder that life's meant to be fun, right? If there's any way that you can look at the brighter side of things, you will absolutely have a better time. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if it's just going outside and enjoying closing your eyes for 30 seconds, enjoying listening to animals, nature, or something innocent, uh, you can always bring a little levity to wherever you are. And just remember, we are more alike than we are different, and you are not alone. Thank you, Heraclides. Man is most nearly himself when he achieves the seriousness of a child at play. Okay, how about... We make a promise to ourselves, not each other, ourselves. Let's do something with childlike enthusiasm this weekend. That's my goal. Maybe it's your goal too. If you end up doing something with childlike enthusiasm this weekend, come back and tell us about it in the comments. I know I would love to hear about it and I know others would love to hear about it too. And if I keep my promise and do the same, I will share it with you on Monday. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed all the show and tells and my new book, Chatting With Me and Everyone Else. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. A safe and beautiful weekend. Oh, and a long weekend. Monday is Memorial Day here in the U.S. It is also Marlon's 20th birthday. How in the world do I have a 20 year old and I'm turning 50 this year? I, uh, anyway, so we'll be celebrating Marlon's birthday on Monday. I won't be going live on Monday because of that. I will be barbecuing here at the RV for him. That's what we decided to do to celebrate his birthday. And I will see you next week again. Have a wonderful and safe long weekend and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.